Ooh. It's a box. Let's open it. What's going on, everyone? It's Rich Haywood here from Making Ice Cream Productions and Team RGFC, welcoming you to yet another episode of Good Times with Retro Rich. Today, we indeed have a box. What's in the box? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get right into this thing. <clears throat> I think you guys already know. I mean, you clicked on the thumbnail. You know what's in this box. But I figured we'd go straight in, right from the jump. Just so I can get my reaction of seeing the packaging and everything, right? Ooh, there it is. There it is, guys. It is a Evercade EXP Standard Edition. Um, looking at the package right away, it is everything that I've seen on all the other videos, and it is everything that I've seen online. It looks really sharp. Looking at the package, like in in general, it all it has like a flow to it. It's got like the cartridge right here, you know that that's you know telling you to look towards the the front, and then of course like the game is telling you to go into the the thing. It, it's a it's a cool design. The back is really cool. It shows you, um, you know, not only the Tate mode, but the, uh, the, you know, the regular handheld mode. It's got some cool features telling you about save states, um, scan line filters, play HD on TV. So most of the, the really cool features are already uh, placed in here. And even right up on top, four to five hours of battery life, Wi-Fi, HDMI, USB-C connectivity, all that stuff is just boom, right there on the box. That's pretty cool. Um, You've got, of course, included the Capcom collection with 18 games, which is awesome. And you've got the IRM cartridge that comes with six games. And then, of course, it says Discover More, where if, you know you can get all your extra collections. And they highlight some cool things, some companies, as well as um, you know some games uh, on here, which I thought was a that's an interesting mix. Um, we'll get into that in a second. But you know, you got Atari, uh, C64. And then like titles, Double Dragon 2, uh, Burger Time, Earthworm Gin, and Tatsujin. Um, yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. You know, on the bottom here, um, actually lists um, the you know it lists some of the games up here of the 18, and you know obviously all six on the IRAM collection. But um, <clears throat> on the bottom, it actually lists every single game in the collection, um, which is kind of neat. And then on the bottom here in the IRAM uh, cartridges, right right there, all the six of them, uh, just in text. There and then, of course, all your you know, licensing information and uh, like the, the stuff that you got to put on the box um, for that. This is, I uh, I believe, the U.S. Uh, model, um, and I was able to get this actually from ordering from one of the only retailers that I don't think any of us um, Evercast folk uh, have mentioned, and that's Best Buy. So when I found out that I wasn't going to get my limited edition. I had the sads, I got in, you know, I had, had the tears, they flew down a little bit. And I was like, you know what, I got to get something so we can talk to you guys about, about this thing. Um, so where am I going to go? And I, Amazon was an option, but uh, it's a little finicky here in the U.S. You ordering from Amazon, you don't know. Video Games Plus was an option, but then it's got to get from the U.K. to Canada, Canada through customs to me. I just seemed, seemed like that was a, a, a thing. And Funstock wasn't an option because when I went to go order this, was already sold out for the, just the general edition um, on fun stuff because people, I guess, were running and picking up a, a, uh, a standard edition after they found out they couldn't get their limited, huh? So, but anyway, last bits of things on the packaging. Um, there's some really, really awesome artwork on here. Um, you've got the Street Fighter theme on this side where you got Chun Li and Ken and Zangief, um, probably the shoulder of, oh no, that's, a, that's actually, that's a, that looks like Dal Seam's face. Sort of on there. I don't know. I'll try to put a close up or whatever. And then on this side, uh, you've got, um, you know, like the the uh, the classic bomber vehicles of 1942, 1943. Um, you got Mega Man. Um, you got all sorts of crazy stuff uh, going on on this side. Really cool artwork. Really really neat. So anyway, it's uh, it's actually from the. Uh, oh okay, it's from the the uh, the things right here. Um, the, I guess it's like the box art um, for the collection itself. Uh, for Street Fighter 2 and then Mega Man uh, X combined with 1942. 
So it's kind of cool. And it's a kind of a cool theme too, that they actually had this whole, these three games specifically highlighted. And then these are the actual games on the side of the cart. Um, I think that was done deliberately. I don't think when you open up the Capcom collection, these games are going to show up in this order. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but you know, interesting, interesting, cool design choices, but enough about the artwork in the box. Let's get into this thing, right? All right, cool. Let's go. All right, cool. We got some cool stuff on the mat. We're going to get rid of this stuff here for just a second. Move these guys out of here. And slide this one guy all the way over here. Boom. There it is. The Evercade EXP packaging. We're going to, we're going to go over here. Just get into this thing right here. All right. Very excited. Very excited. Boom. Retro gaming leveled up. Very cool. And of course, you know, like the, the cartridge is telling you, go down and go down and then take this flap up and open the box. And what do we get? There it is, folks. There it is. The Evercade EXP sitting right in there. Now, right, right away, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it up. And then I've heard a lot of people saying, oh man, that is 100% correct. It, it definitely, there is a feel of weight to it. There is, yes, here, let me just grab this guy here. This definitely feels lighter in the hand, all right? Not, not as overall glossy, shiny. You can see some of the lights coming up on the OG. Let me take the uh, limited in here. Even you know, still feels the same, obviously, but the, you know, the lights are, flying all around in here and then you've got the exp in your hand um, we got the clicky 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 buttons very cool very cool very cool face buttons here and some people were talking about the a button a little sticky a over here these are clicky a little clicky menu button a b nice nice there and then of course that d-pad gotta love that d-pad this one's actually a little flatter uh, then the OG. Let me just take the OG again. A little flatter. These these are definitely more pronounced on the OG than they are on the EXP. Not sure I'm going to like that too much, to be honest. But you know, something to be something to be said. This is actually a different D-pad. Not in not in design on the uh, on the innards of the D-pad, but that's certainly on the outside is a little flatter. So anyway, I'll take a look at some of this stuff here. We got the HDMI port. We got the cartridge port there. There's the power button right there. I'm turn that on in a second. Um, we got the uh, L2, R2. This definitely does feel good uh, if you're going to need uh, to do L1, R1, L2, R2 kind of gameplay. Um, that definitely feels good in the hand. And I like the fact that on the back here, you can kind of see see that texture. It definitely feels like the texture feels like kind of neat there. And you got these. I'm sure screw hole covers. I don't know if you know. You're not, you're not getting in here to do your own maintenance, obviously, but um, but that's kind of cool. You, know, you got a little speaker, and a little vent vent action here, and your speakers, I guess, are right there or down here. I don't know what else this this is uh, supposed to be. Maybe an additional vent or something like that. And on the bottom here, you got your light indicator. You've got your volume buttons, which is cool. Here's your USB C, your headphone jack, and then the Tate. T button. There's the T button there. You know, and I guess uh, there's your little Tate symbol there. It's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the that is the handheld itself. Let's put this guy down. Let's see what else we got in the box. Of course, we do have the IREM Arcade One cartridge. That's that R type. Looking good. Looking good. In the hunt, R type and Moon Patrol are the ones that are. Um, featured here on the box. Of course, you also have 10 yard fight, lightning swords, and battle chopper on this cart as well. There it is. All right, cool. I guess we can open this one up. Let's see what's going on here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Get the stuff out of here. All right, there it is. Boom. There we go. There's the IREM Arcade One manual. I always love 
taking a look at this. They do such a great job with these uh, with these manuals. You know, so much information, really cool artwork. Uh, they're doing a really, really great job with this stuff. There's the art type stuff there. I can't wait to dive into this one. And even more, even more stuff about each game. That's really, really cool. There's Moon Patrol. Got the uh, got the uh, marquee artwork. I wonder if they did that. Did they do that? Yeah, they did on an R type too. That's awesome. That's really cool. I mean, I guess that's the flyer artwork uh, from when they were trying to sell the machines to people, I guess. Very cool. Very cool stuff in the hunt. There's the other mar marquee. Yeah, mar I'm liking the fact that these are getting more than just the one pager with your controls and stuff. It's very cool. And there's the marquee for Battle Chopper there. Um, lightning swords. Oh, I guess maybe they were they were highlighting. There's Ten Yard Fight, only getting the uh, you know the, the the single double pager treatment. I guess uh, in the hunt. You know, I guess maybe these are marquee titles that are getting the extra page work there. But um, that's interesting. And of course, have you got them all? There is the checklist. It's neat. It's neat to see the checklist for all the uh, all the carts there. And then uh, you know an ad for the VS, which is kind of cool. It's very it's very cool to have. Of course, is your cartridge there. We're gonna put that to the side because we're gonna we're gonna get into that thing in just a second. All right, Let's see what else we got in this box. Boom, a little cardboard there. You got your USB C cable. It's very nice that they provided one, uh, which is kind of cool. I'll actually, plug that in in a second. Of course, your Capcom collection book. That is very nice. Looking awesome. This artwork is very, very, very cool. Let's take a look at this stuff in here. Bam. Huh. Capcom initially uh, founded in 1979 under the IRM Corporation. That's kind of cool. Didn't know that. 1979 is a fine year, I would say. <laughs> uh, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. Look at that. Look at that full page thing there. We could, uh, Ryu and Ken. You got the cool thing, you got all the moves for all the dudes. And Mega Man 1 and 2 getting their single page treatment. Mega Man X with a nice full page uh, kind of thing there. Strider with the full, these are awesome. These are really, really cool. 1942, of course you got a Tate mode, that one. That's neat. Um, 1943 and 1944 getting a single pager. Final Fight, look at that. Look at that artwork, that's cool. It's really neat. Commando and Wolf, Battle of the Battlefield Mercs. Getting single pagers, Captain and Bionic Commando. There's that full pager for Breath of Fire, boom! Man, I cannot wait to get into this one. Very, very cool. And more stuff about the RPG as you need to learn all of the stuffs about your RPGs, of course. Ghouls and Ghosts and Legendary Wings getting single page treatment as is Forgotten Worlds and Volgus, very cool, very cool. Volgus is another one of those ones. I just don't know. I don't think I've ever played it. I am very, uh, very much looking forward to. It says, look at that, it says Best in Tate. Look at that, very, very cool. And then there is the double page, long, long version of the checklist. And there you go. All right, cool. So we got that. And what else we got? We got, of course, the quick start guide tells you, plug it in, hold that button for two seconds and go through the quick start and play. Oh, there's something on the back there. There's your charging, boot up, low battery, game menu, A, B, D-pad. This is like how you do your Tate mode with the Tate buttons. Very cool. Very neat. All right, cool. Well, let's close that up and move to the next thing where we start turning this thing on. Let's go. All right, guys, we got this plugged in. As you notice, we might be not using the standard cable that it came with, but this other one that I, I found there, just the cable's a little long for where I'm recording. So anyway, let's do this. Hit the button. Got the indicator. It's on. We're gonna boot. There it is, Blaze Entertainment. Very cool, very cool. Speakers are speakering. There we go, we got the uh, English language. Of course, we're gonna select that. 
All right, so then it wants to connect to Wi-Fi. Setting up network connection. Very cool. Checking IP address. Connection successful. There we go. Oh, we're greeted to an end user license agreement. That is definitely something that I didn't expect to see. Um, but uh, there we go. I guess maybe you have to because you know if anything connects to the internet, you know, getting updating and error reporting and rules of conduct and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. Interesting to see. And then uh, yeah, as most do, you just scroll down and you accept. Ooh, an update is available. Would you like to update now? Well, sure. Let's go ahead and update. There we go. We got a boot. It's good and doing its update, writing, and all sorts of other crazy stuff. There we go. It's the boot after the update. Very cool. All right, here we go. We got the no cartridge inserted message. We got the EXP menu we can go into. There's the EXP collection of Capcom games. We got Hidden Games, 0 of 5 unlocked. And then, of course, the Coming Soon menu. This Coming Soon menu is uh, going to be the, um, I'm imagining, the Evercade Game of the Month uh, side of things. This is where you're going to get all of your cool extra content delivered, uh, just like on the VS, which is cool. You've got your hidden games. Uh, it says zero out of five unlocked. Before we go in there, let's go into the settings. Let's go into the display settings. Now, this is part of the, the thing that I was most interested in. Of course, we got all of your regular things that are on the VS. You got pixel perfect, the original ratio, full screen. Um, you got your shader options, that'll, uh, strong or uh, subtle scan lines. You got your bezels, which are really cool. Um, and then you got your Tate bezels, which are interesting. That's pretty cool. Very, very neat. And there is your dynamic rate control. It's disabled. I don't know what would happen if you enabled it, but this is something I'm going to want to do a video about. This is a new feature specifically for the Evercade EXP that the OG handheld does not have. Um, you've got your, your uh, display brightness, it's all the way to the max. And you've got your screen dimming, which is currently set to one minute, that's the default. Um, I think even screen dimming might be a new, a new feature. Um, and then you've got your scan lines off and on for the menu, um, which I think is also new. Um, very cool, very cool stuff. So I'll definitely, you know, like I said though, I definitely want to check out that whole like dynamic rate control thing and see what's going on with that. All right, cool. We got theme, we got the blue and gold, the Evercade grid, the Evercade EXP menu. That's cool. Let's, let's put it in the EXP mode. Yes. There we go. Look at all that. Look at that cool. Look at that cool stuff right there. We got sound. We got, ooh, the master volume is actually down. Uh, by default, I think it's because I haven't hit the button all the way up. There your network stuff. Accessibility features. You got high contrast mode, which is a really cool feature. Uh, to put in. Uh, of course you can change the language. The system menu you can check for updates or do your factory reset. Uh, legal and support, credits, and then of course your secret menu. Let's get into the Capcom collection and see what's going on. Everyone seems to go for Street Fighter and you know what? I think I'm gonna follow them. Let's load it up. Now remember guys, the music and sound effects here, this is from the arcade version of Street Fighter. So if you're expecting the warm tones of the SNES version, that's not the thing because this is actually the uh, arcade version. So let's put some coins in here. Bang. Do -do 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 -do. We gotta, gotta do Rio. Ryu versus Ryu. Nice. All right. All right. There we go. Buttons are clicking. All right. 
So we got the menu, we'll quit out of there. And let's go to Mega Man 2. Put this up now. This is the NES version of that. Oh yeah. Very cool, very cool. Got to do a little dance. Very cool. Very crisp also, by the way, is the screen. I haven't mentioned that already. See, now this, that sound, the sound out of these speakers as far as the NES stuff goes. Ooh, very good, very good. Very, very cool, very cool. I can't believe I'm playing Mega Man on an Evercade. It just, it's awesome. Very cool, very cool stuff, man. See ya. Oh, so cool. So cool. All right, very cool. All right, anyway, let's move along. So we've got some of that. Actually, let me go back into the Capcom thing. So you guys want to see? I'm just gonna start it. Let's let's see some let's see some 16-bit action on here. Mm. Can't wait to dig into this one. It's gonna be very cool. Wow, that sounded awesome. Very cool. Nice, very, very nice. All right, so let's get out of here and put some cartridges in, see what's going on. All right, so it actually went into screen dimming mode while we were, while we were away. Let's actually grab one of the older cartridges the Atari collection, and it it seems that there's some like some of that cartridge tightness that some of the other reviewers were talking about. So let's find out what we get when we put in Atari Collection One. Satisfying clicky noise. There we go. Asteroids, Canyon Bomber. All right. You gotta try some Ninja Golf when you find it, right? Do, 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 do. All right, let's get some asteroids on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's 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 a good time right there. Feeling good. Oh, I really like the way that the D-pad feels with this. That's very cool. Very neat. Turrets for points happening all over the place here with some asteroids. All oh, very very nice. Very cool. Very very nice. Oh man, I could play this for a while, but I won't because, you know, we gotta move on. All right, cool. So that's that's the Atari collection. And the Atari collection's in here. So let's see. Coming out okay. Put it in okay. Out. In. All right, well, that worked. All right, let's, let's try another one. <laughs> All right, cool. Very cool. So, what else we got? We got, can we get this? Oh, there we go. In there. Clicky click. And just an in. Clicky click. I don't know. All right. Third time's a charm. Let's go to the new IRAM cartridge to see what that, that's all about. Of course, it's the arcade version of our type, as it did being a arcade collection. 
Yum, 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 more coins. Yes. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah. This game is super hard. Played the Master System version until the wheels fell off of that thing. Man, this D-pad feels really nice. Again, it feels really good. There we go. We get the bonus power up. Hmm. Oh. That's okay. All right. So very cool. Our type works. And then we can go back to the menu. And we can pull out the cartridge. Clicky, clicky. And clicky, clicky. And there it is. I mean, working good. Looking good, feeling good. All right, so we got that. And then let's see if we can get a little power off action here. Turn this thing off instead of press and hold. There you go. I didn't put my fingerprints on it already. They said this screen, they said the screen was actually like a, not a plastic, but kind of like a tempered glass. You can definitely kind of see and feel uh, on it. That is def there's something there that is definitely uh, less than the plastic on the OG handheld. The OG handheld, you can actually just press down and it almost just goes right in. You can actually hear. You get the OG handheld. You can actually just kind of press in. It's just, pla it's just like a plastic layer over the LCD. So there you go. All right, cool. So anyway, stick these in here. Yep. That one's all good there. Now before we go here, I definitely want to check out the mode of the EXP that is unlike the OG handheld, and that is the Tate mode. You got this little button down here, the T button. And then at any time, you can go ahead and press it, and it'll instantaneously, man, that is really fast, uh, go into that mode. So let's hit this button and play some 1942. Put some coins in here. All right, there we go. We are tauteing away. All right. I'm gonna put it down here so you guys can see a little better. Now holding it in this mode does feel pretty comfortable. It's a little awkward, but I'm not amazingly bothered by it, to be honest. You know, it's, it's definitely doable, uh, for sure. And you get that screen real estate, which is pretty cool. You know, so um, that's pretty neat. Ooh, 71%, huh? Woohoo! Hooray, I got a high score. Very cool. So, you know, and like I said, to go into the Tate, Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Very easy to do. So that's Tate mode. Very cool. All right, awesome. I guess it's uh, time for a little uh, wrap-up action or something like that. And there it is. There is the Evercade EXP charging away. Very, very cool stuff. All right, let's go. So there you have it, folks. That is the Evercade EXP in a nutshell, in a quick look. Very, very cool. Very excited to have this thing. I'm also very excited to find out what they do with the uh, L2, R2 buttons now that they have a console uh, in the home console variety in the VS and now the handheld that has both of those uh, buttons on it, which is really, really cool. Um, another thing that was mentioned in a couple other interviews, uh, or not interviews, but reviews, about this device is of course the lack currently in the menu for um, per game control mapping. Um, and according to the fine folks over at Blaze, that actually is a feature. Um, I should say that is actually a feature <laughs> that is coming in quarter one of 23. So not too long away, we'll be uh, able to button map our way into all sorts of cool stuff. But for now, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this bad boy charge a little more. 
So I'm gonna get right back into getting my keister handed to me in some Street Fighter 2. So anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments um, what you think about this video. What do you think about this kind of quick look? Um, is it a review? I mean, I don't know, like, I'm not one to say, oh yeah, this is awesome, you should go out and buy one or whatever. I mean, if you like it, uh, and if you're watching this channel, I mean, you should be, you know, you should know that I do a lot of Evercade content on this channel. And if you found me uh, just on the ether, there are loads and loads and loads of Evercade videos. I'm, I am a fan uh, of the Evercade. So, you know, don't take my work for it. Take the word of everybody else on the internet for it, I guess. Um, you know, I think it's a really cool device. I think it's really neat. I love my OG handheld. It's not going anywhere. Um, but I'm very, very glad to have the new and shiny goodness of the EXP and all of the cool features that it comes with. So with all that being said, we will catch you next time for some good times. I'm Rich and we will see you later. Take it easy guys. rtfc.bacon.icecream.com